Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome out to tonight's training webinar. I'm Jake Bray here with Stephen Swenson. Uh, we do this every week here, every Wednesday at the same time. Yeah, definitely. So excited to be here. We've got a lot of good things to talk about and uh, review some online auctions. So kind yeah. of excited. I don't know if we've got anybody here for the first time. Uh, we usually assume that most everybody has been here before. Uh, so if you have questions, if it is your first time, feel free to ask questions throughout the event. You can ask any time, and we love getting them. We think the more questions, uh, the better. So feel free to, uh, to do that at any point here tonight. Also, the webinars are always recorded, so if you miss one, it's not a big deal. You can always catch it, uh, the replay, afterwards. Now, in terms of what we wanted to talk about tonight, there's actually a, a number of different companies. We wanted to talk about online auctions tonight, um, and there are so many different online auction providers that we wanted to be able to jump through a lot of them um, quickly. On some, we might uh, be able to switch off and do live demonstration during part of it, um, but we mostly want to make sure that everybody is familiar with who these companies are and uh, that you are aware of how their sites basically function and operate so that you know uh, there are lots of different places that you can go to and use if uh, if you're interested in online auctions. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that me and Shane have had the opportunity of uh, being involved in tax sale investing for almost 20 years to actually see this happen, to see kind of the online auctions start taking place where you just had just a few counties and now literally uh, you know, many, many counties across the country are conducting their auctions online. So because of it, there's a lot of different companies out there. There's a lot of different software. And really being a good tax sale investor, I think, in the future is going to be understanding how to participate in online auctions uh, because that's where at least a, a, a portion of the property tax sales are going to be taking place. Yeah, in fact, I'm, I'm sure that at some point in the future, they will all be online. Um, as of right now, uh, we're probably, I'm not sure what the percentages are, uh, you know, there's probably still, the, the, the majority of sales are probably still taking place as live auctions, but it's changing all the time. Yeah, and especially in certain states where they've started implementing online auctions, for example, like Florida, uh, where, you know, 80% of the counties are conducting their tax lien auctions online, and maybe 30% of or 20%, 25% of the counties are doing tax deed auctions online. And so each month, there's there's new counties that are that are starting to, for the first time, participate in an online auction versus doing it a live auction there at the county courthouse. Yeah, there are a, a lot of advantages. And like Steve uh, mentioned a second ago, online auctions uh, really came about around the same time that online record searches and online record databases became available. Um, and as a whole, uh, they were a real game changer for tax sale investors. Uh, you know, prior to online auctions and online records, you had to travel to a uh, county records building to do any kind of research. You had to travel there in order to participate in the auction. Everything about what you did required you to travel there and be there in person. And so uh, really what's happened is it's alleviated that requirement. Now we can do things from out of state. We can invest from anywhere as long as you've got you know, access to the internet. And this may have increased the competition at some of the online auctions a bit, but it's not to a point where there aren't still great deals to be had at, uh, at the different online auctions that, uh, that take place. Yeah, I mean, the, the way of the, the, the simplicity of investing today is completely different than it was 15 or 20 years ago. And so, you know, actually being a tax sale investor is so much easier than it was even even 10 or 20 years ago. You know, just like Shay brought up the fact of online records, uh, all of this information that we're able to, to pull without going down to the county courthouse, without going through Rolodexes and, and you know, finding all of these different records, we're able to do all that online. And so it's, it's, it's a big game changer uh, and it really has been for the last 10 years or so. Yeah, there are, uh, oftentimes there's different opportunities that maybe you can remember from your past where you didn't act fast enough or maybe you didn't, uh, you know, maybe you had a chance to, to invest in something years ago and you didn't and it turned out to be really good. Well, tax sale investing right now, uh, even though Steve and I started 
with this close to 20 years ago, it's, it's ne there's never been a better time than right now to get started. It's one of those things that's getting better and better. It's getting easier and easier with time. So uh, I think it speaks well to the future of tax sale investing and where things are headed. I, I think it's going to continually get easier and better. Um, you know, maybe we'll get a chance to look at past sales because that's one of the things that we do sometimes is we're looking at, uh, at different online options and we'll look at past sales results to try to get an idea of, uh, of, of where to uh, where to invest, um, but there are many aspects of online options out there. There's a lot of different companies that uh, that do it. There's uh, different ways that uh, that it's done. You've got third-party companies that do it, and you've also got counties that conduct their own auctions. So uh, the main point for counties is that it opens up the number of potential buyers for them by holding it online. You know, they were they were limited before by the number of people that would show up at the sale, but with online auctions, it's much easier for them to reach a broad group of people and to have that many more people participating in their tax sales, which is more profitable for them. And it's also easier. I think it saves them a lot of time doing it online versus trying to hold everything in person. Yeah, and, and moving to online auctions actually saves the county quite a bit of money especially when you're talking about huge tax lien auctions or things like that where there's, you know, uh, you know, some of those tax lien auctions in person would, would go three to five days because they just had so many tax liens to get through in places like uh, Phoenix, Arizona, or places in Florida, places like that. Uh, and so the ability to do it online saves the county money, and it also gives an, us as an investor, what the big positive for us is that it gives us the chance to invest all across the country uh, without uh, ever leaving our home. Yeah, which is a major advantage for real estate investors. It's also something that didn't really exist for real estate investors 20 years ago. So it, it's uh, it's a new, really it's new investment in many ways. Sometimes we call it the new foreclosure opportunity because it's essentially what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's a foreclosure opportunity that you didn't have access to 15 years ago without a lot of travel and that most people didn't really understand. So, um, you know, there are a few facts here that we'll talk about real quick before we dive into these different companies. Um, first off, a lot of the companies out there, a lot of the auctions will include pre-auction downloads that contain all of the instructions, procedures for participants. Um, Really important to make sure you download these in the beginning and you read through all of them. Um, it's going to include everything you need to know um, about submitting, uh, submitting bids, getting registered, paying for the property, um, and uh, anything else you're going to want to know prior to participating. Yeah, and this is important information. This is this is the type of information that is just as important in many ways as the properties that we're actually going to be bidding on. Because that you know the county may have certain rules, they may have things that we don't know about, and that's where we're going to get that information is through those download packets. And so you know they're going to have instructions and tutorials to explain not only how to use the online auction, uh, but also any type of rules that the state might have. So that's going to be incredibly important information. In fact, some counties even actually have practice auctions. And so what these practice auctions allow you to do is to to practice before the auction, so you get a chance to participate in a mock auction and kind of go through the process of submitting bids using the software and understanding the system. Uh, if you've ever purchased anything off of Amazon or eBay or something like that, you're going to be able to go through the process and understand it. Most of these companies have set this up so this is very user friendly. As user friendly as they can because you know there's going to be so many different users on it. That's part, part of their business. And so uh, you know all of these different tools that are available is something we're going to want to Pay attention to as investors. Yeah. Now, we've mentioned the online auction companies, and uh, some of the main online auction companies uh, that we'll talk about are the bigger online auction companies are Bid for Assets, Real Auction, uh, the Grant Street Group, SRI Auctions, and um, Civic Source, to name a few here. Well, there's a few others that we'll talk about as we get um, further into the uh, into the webinar. Um, but let's talk about a couple of these first, um, beginning with the one that, that if anybody here is familiar with online auctions, uh, the first one you most likely be familiar with are real auction because I think they're, uh, they handle all of the auctions, or at least a good chunk of the auctions um, 
in uh, in Florida right now, and they're also picking up other counties. Um, really, they uh, they do a lot. I guess this kind of explains a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's one thing about Real Auction is they have several different states that are their clients. So they're going to be handling the tax deed auctions in Florida. In fact, uh, they handle a majority of them. Grant Street Group has a few counties as well, but most of your online tax deed auctions in Florida are going to be done through Real Auction. They also have tax lien auctions in Arizona, Colorado, Florida, Maryland, Illinois, Nebraska, and they have a ton of New Jersey tax lien auctions. And so as far as tax lien auctions, you can see all of those different states, and those are going to be some of the top tax lien investing markets that we're going to want to participate in anyway uh, that are all available uh, through realauction.com. And in a minute, we may, uh, we may jump over and uh, look at some of the examples. I wanted to get into some of the other companies, though, because we've looked at Real Auction more often, and we've looked at some of the other companies less. And so we want to, uh, want to cover all of these here. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get a chance to dip into uh, Real Auctions and, and what they have right now. Um, we'll also see if we can show you where their practice auctions and things like that are at for, uh, for the additional online uh, tax lien sales they do too. Yeah, and the one thing that's nice, we're going to be going through all of these different companies, but the one thing that's nice is you being a member of, of Tax Health Support, you're going to have all of these links available on the website. So regardless of what company we're talking about, if they have an online auction, we're going to have that information on the website along with the practice auctions as well. So if you go to, let's say you want to participate in the Colorado auctions, you can go to, uh, to Tax Health Support see what catalog, Colorado auctions are taking place, and then also click on the link to do the practice auction. Yeah, you know, the same is true with Real Auction. Um, when it comes to the over-the-counter tax liens that they offer there, you can buy them um, directly off of the websites, uh, and they make it relatively easy to do. Basically, what they do is that they hold the tax sale, and anything that's left over after that point uh, is available in the same way it is with the online auction. Uh, it's just a matter of, of going through their list and picking which liens you want and uh, contacting the county to make payment arrangements. Yeah, and, and they're going to offer over-the-counter tax liens in a number of Florida counties, Arizona, uh, sometimes some Colorado counties as well. And so, especially right after the auction takes place, that's a great time to go online, uh, you know, in Florida or, you know, coming up in February after the Arizona auction. That's the best time to get it, take advantage of some of these over-the-counter tax liens. You know, uh, whoop, let me jump back there. Just something to take note of with uh, with some of these companies, especially with Real Auction, is that um, in states like Florida, where they're holding the uh, the tax deed sales, they're also conducting the mortgage foreclosure sales. And so, uh, it's important when you're looking at the auctions within uh, within Real Auction to make sure that you're looking at. Uh, tax deed foreclosures and not uh, mortgage foreclosures, but it's usually pretty easy to tell the difference because mortgage foreclosures are about 20 times the price of your tax deed foreclosures. You know, that's where you'll see, uh, you know, that's closer to the market value of homes or even higher in some cases. Yeah, and, and it'll be color coordinated as well. So when if you go to one of these counties that has both foreclosures and tax deed sales, like Charlotte County there, uh, the the foreclosures are going to be listed in blue and the tax deeds are going to be listed in yellow and it says tax deed and so you're able to see what auctions are taking place on what day. Yeah, in fact, um, we can jump off here for a second if we want. We can also look at, uh, you know, let's, let's jump off for just a moment here and uh, we'll, we'll go and take a look at, uh, actually we'll just go directly there. I think we just want to go to, um, so, I mean, essentially what we'll be able to do is look at upcoming auctions in, in Florida that are taking place through tax deeds. We can also take a look at the upcoming auctions uh, in New Jersey and Colorado that have uh, tax and certificates. And then just a second here. Now, one thing that's nice about these online auctions as well is they allow us to, to use debit or credit cards uh, to, to purchase the properties. 
And so, you know, that, that makes it a lot easier. That gives us more flexibility uh, where we can just pay for it uh, using, using an account or cards that we already have set up. Okay, let me switch this over here. Okay, so as an example here, if we want to look and see how some of these are, are set up here, we can go to List Center. We're going to go into the online auction section here. And if we wanted to look at um, any of these, let's say we want to look at some of the online auction uh, stuff for real auction. Um, we know that they hold a lot of the stuff for the Florida tax deeds, so these are actually going to link us directly to those sales. Uh, if we're looking at any of the, uh, the ones here in Florida. Yeah, and one thing to note about the Florida tax deed auctions is a lot of these are going to be held monthly. In fact, some of the counties are going to have, you know, they could have three or four auctions in just one month. And so, you know, what that does give us the ability to do is continue investing within the same area because we know there's going to be new properties. And, and that's really what makes it nice when, when we're looking at price. Uh, you know, when we've, compete, when we've competed in some of these Florida online tax deed auctions, you know, we may have been on four or five, six properties before we even win one. So, you know, we, we've been on several properties, but what's nice is it gives us the ability to, if we didn't win one, to go ahead and, and purchase properties the next month. Yeah. Now, what we pulled up here are just a couple of, uh, of these sites, and I wanted to pull up this one because it shows you just basically the way that, the, that their, uh, their tax deeds and their foreclosures are listed. So you can see here that they have foreclosures being sold on every day of the month almost as far as regular weekdays. But you can see that they've got the color coordination here is different on these yellow ones. And on those dates, they're selling both foreclosures, uh, you know, regular bank foreclosures and tax deeds. So whenever we're looking at one of these lists, um, we generally have to work through the standard foreclosures first before we'll get to the actual tax deeds. So in this case, um, you know, we can see the you can see at the top here where it has listed foreclosure, which tells us what you know we're looking at a, at bank foreclosures instead of tax deeds. But that will change as soon as we get into the tax deeds, which begin right here. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if, if it is one of the counties that has both uh, foreclosures and tax deed auctions, the tax deeds are always going to be listed after the foreclosures. So they're going to sell the mortgage foreclosures first, then they're going to offer the tax deed properties. Uh, some counties will just sell only tax deeds, and some counties, like this county, will have, sell uh, foreclosure mortgage deeds and also tax deeds on the same auction. Yeah, you can also see just the difference in the amounts. You know, the mortgage foreclosures are always going to be above market value in, in, in most cases. That's why the people are upside down in their property and they can't sell it. Um, you know, so that's not unusual for them to be upside down. Well, and you can look at all of these where they're, they're way upside down. You know, 400000 versus 144000 277000 versus ninety seven. This is why, you know, me and Shade have always stayed away from mortgage foreclosures and really stuck with tax foreclosures just because of, of that difference and the fact that we're able to start the bidding at usually around 10%, 15% of market value, if not lower. Yeah. Yeah, the the, uh, the bank foreclosures really just can't hold a candle to uh, to the real foreclosure uh, that tax deeds are able to uh, to offer. Plus, you get all the advantages of uh, of that foreclosure wiping out anything uh, attached to the property. That's a huge advantage, which you don't get with uh, with uh, which you don't get with your standard bank foreclosures. Now, the, the next company is BidForAssets.com, and BidForAssets doesn't really sell taxing certificates. They primarily just sell real estate, so we're talking about tax deeds here. And so they're going to handle tax deed auctions primarily for California. Uh, they handle most of the California auctions. Uh, Grant Street Group has one or two, but BidForAssets handles most of them. Also auctions in Washington, uh, Idaho, uh, some different states like that where, where they're just essentially just selling the property. And so it's going to be, you know, similar to eBay where you're just bidding up the price at this type of auction. Yeah, we've got a really good question here um, regarding um, 
over-the-counter tax deeds. And, um, and what the member's wondering here, you're saying, um, want to know if I buy over-the-counter tax deeds in Florida, would I be able to own the property outright without waiting for a redemption period? And would I get the deed right away after I contact the county to pay the over-the-counter tax deed? Uh, and it's a really good question because Florida is a little bit confusing in, in how they do things. Uh, Florida offers both tax liens and tax deeds. So uh, the first part of the answer is if you wanted to buy um, a tax deed in Florida, you can buy a tax deed without having to wait for any kind of redemption period. Um, that's true of the tax deeds that are offered in Florida and of the over-the-counter tax deeds you know, that are offered. Neither one of those will have a redemption period attached to them. Um, but the way that they handle liens is a little bit different. Um, so Florida sells both tax liens and tax deeds. They sell tax liens with a two-year redemption period and they pay out a maximum interest rate return of 18% annually. Um, what's mainly different about Florida is in most tax deed states at the end of that redemption period, so if it came to an end, two year period uh, came to an end, normally the, uh, the lien holder would have the power to foreclose on the property and would receive the property uh, for their investment essentially. In Florida what's different about it is that uh, after that two year time period passes and the lien holder decides they want to initiate foreclosure, they'll fill out a form with the county, which basically gives the county the go ahead to prepare that property for their tax deed sale. So what they'll do is they'll sell the property at an upcoming auction, uh, online auction through their deed sale, and they'll use the proceeds from that to pay off the lien holders uh, that would exist on the property. So if you're a lien holder that buys a tax lien in Florida, you may not get the property at all. In fact, you've got a really high chance of just getting interest rate return. Um, but if it's property that you're after and you start with a tax deed or with an over-the-counter tax deed, you won't have any kind of a uh, redemption period to wait out. You basically just make the payment arrangements and then the county will ship you the, uh, the deed. Yeah, that's a pretty good explanation. Yeah, so they offer the both there, but you can definitely buy over-the-counter deeds in Florida without having to worry about uh, about any kind of redemption period. They're basically the ones that were offered at the auction and didn't get a bid, uh, and uh, the lien holder didn't want to, you know, basically uh, uh, pay anything additional to foreclose on it. Yeah, and I think a general rule when it comes to over-the-counter tax deeds is that you're not going to have any type of redemption period. So, you know, when we're talking about tax deeds, essentially you're buying the property. Uh, when you finish purchasing it, you're going to receive a deed. You're going to become the owner. The property is going to get transferred in your name. Of course, with liens, that's a little bit different where we're just buying a certificate on the property. Yeah. Now, uh, we were talking about bid for assets uh, before then. And um, the same thing, we can probably just jump over if we want and, and show everybody that real quickly. Let me get back here. Just go directly there to show everybody real quick what we're talking about. And as we, as I mentioned before, you know, bid for assets is primarily tax deed investing. So they're not selling a lot of tax and certificates. They've sold them in the past, but usually 90% of these are 95% of them are all going to be tax deed auctions. Yeah. And so we'll always start over here on the left under county tax sale. That's where how they keep them. Uh, set up, and we can see some of the dates here on the right hand side for upcoming sales. So some of these have already passed here, uh, but as we get into November, we can see we've got Benton County, Washington coming up, we've got Pierce County, and that one I think is a different type of sale. AT, I wonder what, it's probably for a specific type of property. Let's take a look at it. Oh, there it is down there. Okay, and maybe it, oh, it's maybe it's like the assessor or treasurer yeah. is offering. So maybe the AT must stand for assessor or treasurer. I don't know what separates these. They have, in Washington, sometimes we'll have two different types of sales. So I think this is tax title sales, probably. Yeah, we can see though we've as. got 127 of them that are uh, that are available, and uh, and looks like the lowest bid is about 2,300. So when we're talking about, you know, attending or participating in one of these Pierce County auctions, we're essentially buying the property. 
And what we'll usually do is we'll, of course, scroll down and you'll see the contact information. You can see the deposit information. That's going to be important. Uh, a lot of these auctions are going to have deposits. In addition, there's looks like there's a video as well that will explain, uh, you know, kind of how the deposits work and, and how to go about it. Now we've got our electronic list down here at the bottom, and then we've got our list downloads right here um, under uh, you know, PDF and Excel versions of it. Yeah, we also have our county terms of sale as well as, as something we would go through and read before participating in the auction as well. Uh, now one of the questions on the site, um, have all of the over-the-counter liens and deeds on the site had due diligence done on them? And the answer to that is no. In fact, um, the lists that we provide on the site, we, we essentially provide them in the same format, the same way that they're provided uh, to us. So we, what we do is uh, we go directly to the sources like different counties to get their, um, their lists directly from them. Uh, but they'll produce their lists um, just according to the properties that are available. And, uh, and that's basically the way that we'll download it. So there hasn't been any due diligence performed on them uh, before that point, you know, when you're when you're downloading a list and just looking at a at a standard list. Um, now, with that being said, uh, I guess it would depend on what you were looking to invest in, whether tax liens or uh, or or tax deeds. But the amount of due diligence that's required to do on them would be different between the two. But no, you're not going to look at anything that has due diligence done beforehand, except for our secondary property. Yeah, and when we're looking at over-the-counter list, I mean, we, we literally have hundreds of over-the-counter lists with hundreds of thousands of tax liens available and hundreds of thousands of tax deeds available. So, you know, we probably have about 30, 35 different states with over-the-counter list, and we're getting those lists uh, directly from the county, like Shade said. So these are essentially the full list of properties that are available, uh, you know, from the county. I, I hope that, that, uh, that helps here. Um, but please, we keep the questions coming. I think they're really good. Um, you know, this is just an example of how some of the information that we pull from uh, from from the bid for assets site. It's relatively easy, I think. Um, a site that's less familiar to people is Grant Street Group. Yeah, but Grant Street Group still has you know really a ton of different counties and states that they offer tax sales for. They're very similar in a lot of ways to real auction. They kind of compete for the same for the same states and counties, and so they're going to have auctions in Florida, Arizona, Maryland, and then they also have tax deed auctions in Florida and California as well. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, you see here just some of the different places that they represent. In fact, uh, just a couple of months ago, me and Shade uh, competed in uh, Grand Street Group auction for some uh, property in California. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like Steve mentioned earlier, we, we bid on a lot of properties um, because it's the only way that you're going to win. And also, just to keep in mind that you want to pick these properties up for a low price. So it's, there's no point in overpaying for properties when you're dealing with tax sales. The, uh, the primary benefit of buying it through a tax sale is to get it for a cheap price. And so if you overpay for it, you really kind of destroyed that whole point. You're buying these things wholesale. And so... Uh, you know, you want to go into it keeping that in mind and knowing what your exit strategy is beforehand. You know, if you're buying it wholesale, you need to have an idea of how you plan to get out of the property. In other words, are you going to sell it wholesale or, or are you going to try to sell it for market value um, with a uh, uh, using uh, a warranty deed instead of a quick claim deed? You know, are you going to go through the quiet title process or not? A lot of things there to uh, to consider. Uh, you know, as you're uh, as you're looking at some of these properties. And Grant Street Group, like, like Real Auction, is going to have its own website for each county. So for each county that, that they have as one of their clients, they're going to have their own website that's completely custom to, to, that, to that particular county. Uh, and you can see all of the different, they're going to have the documentation. It's very simple to register. In fact, you know, that's something that we would encourage all of you to do uh, after you get off the uh, off, off the webinar tonight is to go and register for these different auction websites. It doesn't cost any money. Uh, pull up a Word doc, put in your username, you know, save all your username and passwords and information and go ahead and register for each one of these so that you can go ahead and, and see the full features. A lot of times you can't see everything uh, that may be available until you register. So it doesn't cost anything quick to do. Yeah, yeah, and there are uh, 
Yeah, I think it's a good idea to, to, to start keeping track of all your username and passwords here with the sites because you're going to sign up on a lot of different sites. You know, one thing that's also kind of sweet about about uh, GrantStream groups is it, is it gives you the ability to uh, search uh, by certain criteria. So you can search tax liens between, you know, uh, $100 and $500 or however you like to do that. And also, like Real Auction, they also offer their over-the-counters online. So there's over a dozen different counties in uh, that will offer their over-the-counter tax liens directly online like real auction. You know, and like Steve mentioned before, um, you don't actually need to, uh, to go to any of the sites normally because you can access everything through, uh, through tax sale support. But why don't we take a second, we'll just, uh, we'll show you the sites here quickly and uh, so that everybody can kind of see here what we're talking about here with the sites. And essentially, this is their home site here. Um, you know, their 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 main page here. Um, and really, you can tell what they're selling here. Ultimately, is software. You know, it, it's a software seller here. They uh, use for uh, for tax collection auctions and and uh, and, and e payment here, and what they're doing here is they want to sell different county officials on on using this system here. Uh, in fact, I'm sure they've got a sales group that works just specifically trying to get uh, different counties to uh, to agree to do this, and uh, and so this is kind of like their their main site, and then they've got individual sites for each one of the uh, for each one of the counties that they represent. You know, I think that's a, that's a good point. These companies do more than just auctions. Uh, they'll do the tax collections. Uh, they do several other things besides just doing the auctions. In fact, when you go to foreclose on a property, a lot of times you'll do the deed application either through the Grand Street Group or Real Auction. They have a system in connection with the county to be able to do that. And so these companies provide a lot of additional things in addition to the the county auctions, but the county auctions is really what we're going to be using. Yeah. Um, and we'll see Grand Street Group a lot, I think, as you uh, as we go through the site. Um, SRI Auctions is another one that uh, that is out there that doesn't get used um, quite as much. Um, you know, Zeus, I've always thought this site was a little bit weird. Yeah, and, and they've just kind of recently upgraded it uh, to this new Zeus platform. Uh, which they're going to have tax lien auctions, uh, tax deed auctions, uh, you know, really for I, uh, Louisiana, Florida, Indiana, Colorado, and Iowa. Uh, and so, you know, they're going to have different types of, of tax lien auctions um, and also tax deed auctions through Indiana as well. So they're they actually several counties in Colorado uh, will use uh, this zoo system and in Florida. So you know, right now you could you could go ahead and register and participate through this with some of the uh, Colorado auctions that are coming up. Yeah, yeah, and this is one where you have to register to really see anything, and so you know they basically you have to register for to almost to get on the site. So uh, don't hesitate to register on that one. Now, uh, FloridaTaxSales.com, uh, the tax sale portal. This is a site that's kind of a cheaper version of Real Auction or Grand Street Group. Uh, their software that does uh, tax lien auctions for a number of different counties within Florida. And so they're just primarily will only do Florida. Uh, they do just the tax lien sales and each website similar to Real Auction, each county will have its own website similar to Real Auction and Grand Street. Yeah, and you can see they've got a list here of the participating counties that use the uh, the tax sale portal here. You know, you've got Bay, Bradford, DeSoto, Gulf, Hamilton, Hardy, Holmes, Jackson, Okeechobee, um, Wakula, and Madison. So several of the Florida counties here use it. And uh, between Tax Sale Portal and Real Auction um, and Grand Street Group, Grand Street, they pretty much cover all of Florida. Well, and, right? and Zeus. Oh, yeah. There's actually four different system, four different providers for tax lien auction systems for Florida. So it'll actually be all four of them that we've talked about. Oh, nice. And you can see each one will have its own page, very similar to Grand Street Group. It's really it's kind of more of a copy of the Grand Street Group system than it is even a real auction. 
Let's take a look at it here real quick. I'm just going to go to Oh, actually, maybe they don't have the home site part anymore. Maybe with the sales. Oh. Oh, ah, yeah, that's what I did. I will to see here. Was that they were using that system as of this last auction? Let's switch over here to Civic Source because that's actually one that's used quite a bit too. Yeah, Civic Source is uh, is one that we're seeing. Um, more and more often, um, and they are also an auction that does both tax liens and tax deeds. They primarily focus on Louisiana, Mississippi, and Missouri um, up to this point, but they've got handy websites, um, and uh, and depending on what you want, they're another provider here. Let me see what other information. Well, and that's one thing that they've added is the Mississippi and the Missouri auctions. Those weren't available as of last year. And so just this year, they've added these Mississippi and Missouri auctions, which in the past, no, none of those, either of those states were available in with, through an online auction. And so that's something that they've added to just uh, this, this year. And so I imagine that they're going to continue adding as many different states and counties as they can get. Yeah, and in fact, um, a lot of times it's, it's helpful to know what areas these auctions function in and work in uh, because depending on where you want to invest, you, know, you may need to use them. If it's New York that you're looking at, they have primarily two sources they use in New York um, for, their, uh, for their auctions. In fact, there might be three. I'm thinking about it. But nysauctionsbid.com uh, is, uh, is one of them, and, uh, and the hairoffliveBids.com is, uh, is another one. Actually, it might be worth going to uh, take a look at the NYS auctions real quick. Yeah, and, and I actually believe that both of these different companies are owned by the same group, uh, essentially. NYSauctions.com. There we go. All right. So the way they have this set up, this site is uh, is pretty well dedicated just to the uh, uh, to tax foreclosures, really. Uh, and so they've got the sales listed here. We can see that they're coming up on a busy time of the year here, where they've got a lot of sales taking place. Um, this is one that took place here today, the first one, and uh, this one is for November second tomorrow and then the next up that we've got on the 15th uh, for uh, for Franklin County what's nice about the sites here and how they do it is they'll oftentimes put uh, more information on it uh, so you can look at a uh, you could view the auction through the catalog and what we can see here is another thing that's nice about it is that they separate the uh, the properties into the types of properties they are so you can see that in this they've got five commercial vacant. They've got uh, manufactured housing, 14, no category. There's 26 of those. Residential vacant, we've got 25, and we've got 28 single-family homes. And 28 single-family homes essentially available. Uh, you know, most of these in New York are going to start around 10% of, of the market value. So, yeah, we can see so what some of them are right here. Uh, you know, if we wanted to just see what the single-family homes were, we could click on that. And this will show us just the uh, the single family homes that are listed here for the uh, for the auction, and some of them look great. You know, let's take a look. One thing that's nice about it as well is they're going to show pictures. And one thing I want to add, in addition to that, is is if you're within this area, they actually have open houses on a lot of these different properties, and so they'll schedule an open house that you can actually go through and look at the property, which is really rare in tax sale investing. So some of these properties have been foreclosed on and opened up and you can actually, you know, see uh, see the inside. Also one thing that's nice is they include pictures. 
you know, these are going to be current photos of the property to help us get a better idea if we are investing in the state. Yeah, you can actually see the, you know, the tax foreclosure sign right here, you know, up in front of the property right now. See, you know, these are all pictures that were taken specifically for this sale. And you can see this one sitting on a little bit bigger lot. Yeah, almost two acres, you know, a nice, uh, nice home. We could, if we were interested in it, of course, we could do some additional due diligence and, you know, this. Yeah, I, I like these types of auctions just because of the way that they've uh, that they have the property set up. You know, you can see it's just more current. You know, they put more thought and effort into uh, into the actual sale and the properties that are being offered. Whereas most counties just throw the properties on the auction block, um, but you don't get a lot of this current information. Yeah, if you're within the New York area, you know, going down and looking at some of these properties and attending the uh, open houses in person, person it could definitely be beneficial. Yeah, and you can see that the, the bid increments, I'm not sure what they'll start the bidding at here. Yeah, they usually will post that, but it's, from what I've seen, it's around 5 to 10%. Yeah, and you know, they you also see what the full market value is. Any of these sales would be great ones to uh, to participate in, I think. Let's switch over here again, and let's take a look here. Um, Michigan is a state that has um, a couple of different places. There are some states in the country that have a ton of over-the-counter properties to purchase, uh, and some of those uh, would be. Uh, Michigan's got a lot, Arkansas's got a lot, Mississippi's got a lot of over-the-counter, um, and there are two primary sites that we use in Michigan, um, the first one being uh, tax-sale.info, um, and what this is, is their, uh, this is the site they have set up to sell their, their public lands. Um, there's a second site that they have set up as well um, that is the uh, I think it's called Fast Track, right? Fast yeah, Track Michigan Land Bank. Yeah, and that one's just for over-the-counter properties, you know. But it all gives the ability to to sell over-the-counter properties. In addition to Michigan uh, tax sales or tax sell on info, they sell over-the-counters as well. But uh, tax sell on info will handle about eighty percent of the the tax deed auctions taking place in in Michigan. So between the, uh, they actually just wrapped them up, so between the, the beginning of summer until about now, they hold all of their, their tax deed auctions. In fact, uh, tomorrow is their last sale. And one thing that's kind of cool about tax info is after all the auction has taken place, the properties that don't sell are all put on to a, a new sale and then resold starting with a $100 opening bid. Yeah, which that's as close to a land giveaway as you can get when, when counties are willing to forgive the debt that's owed on the property, there's a huge opportunity there for investors. We, Steve and I love those types of properties because essentially, essentially what happens is properties that don't sell obviously have this delinquent debt that just keeps accruing, just keeps adding up. And if it goes for very long, if it goes for five years, 10 years, that amount can get so high to where the properties are just not appealing to investors. They're, that's what happens when you see properties that are valued at $10,000 that have 15000 owed in delinquent taxes and fees, where the numbers just don't make any sense. Well, when the county gets desperate enough, you know, they, they realize that they just need a new property owner owning the property to start paying property taxes because it's been a long time since they've collected property taxes on any of those types of properties. And so um, the counties that are smart about it will forgive that debt that's owed and they will set uh, up those properties with the minimum bid like 50 or $100 um, minimum bid on all of them. And for the investor, it makes uh, for great opportunity because you can buy properties that are worth whatever amount. Five, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand uh, that open up at a hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, you know, overall, I think it's just a smart thing for counties to do. You know, even even we were talking about Florida over the counter tax deeds, and there's good tax deeds there, but there's also, uh, you know, tax deeds that have been on the books for so long that they've accrued so many 
bad taxes that the property is never going to be pr profitable to buy. And so they're sitting on these properties that would be good if you could pick it up for 10 cents on the dollar or 15 cents on the dollar, but because of the back taxes, maybe it's 50 or 60 or 70 cents of what the property value is, uh, it, you know, it takes away that incentive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I clicked on here, so you've got two different options when you go on to tax sale. Um, Dot info. You can either look at their upcoming auctions, like Steve mentioned, they, they uh, just holding their last sale, uh, or you can click on the uh, the surplus properties here. And uh, you could also click if you wanted to by map and look at it by map, which is a handy way if you're trying to keep your investments within a certain geographical area, uh, or if that's how you want to search out your investments, you can do it by map. Um, if you don't want to do it by map, you can just you can also uh, search through just their surplus properties, which you can do by county. So what we're looking at right here are some of the counties that they have surplus for, uh, and we could look at um, no, we could look at any of these if we wanted. You know, this county's only got two, fairly small county here. Well, one thing we could look at as well is the upcoming auction tomorrow, just to get an idea. Now, one thing as well is the properties that may not sell tomorrow will probably be put over the over-the-counter list either through uh, this site or through the land bank. So let's take a look here. Can you click on the online no reserve and pull in? I think it'll pull it up here. I think it'll... A little bit slow, but I think it's still going to work. If not, we could click on the individual uh, counties themselves. You can see how many different counties uh, are essentially, uh, you know, selling property. You can see a, quite a large list of them. And there's there's single family homes. There's commercial properties. We've seen uh, there's a gas station for sale. I mean, there's just a ton of different properties. And one thing that's nice as well is that they've taken photos for a lot of these ones. Yeah, and it doesn't take very long at all to uh, to start going through the list when they've got pictures like this set up. So you can see, um, I like this property right here. Property right here is uh, is a gas station that they've got listed for sale. You know, they've got the uh, the SEV here, which is their a type of assessed value. I think it's about 50% of, of the, uh, the market value on the property. But yeah, you can see we've got a whole bunch of pictures here on each one of the properties that they've got available. So we can see this, this older beat up gas station here. Take a look here. They've got, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these end up on the over-the-counter list here um, next week. Or I guess how long do they wait? Do you know how long they wait? I'm not quite sure how long before they put them on the list. Sometimes counties will have a, a time period they'll wait like four weeks before they'll, they'll add properties from their sale to their over-the-counter list. Um, but it may not be that long. I know Mississippi waited, you know, remember they made us wait for four weeks. Yeah, it is a nicer way to invest, and you can see that the minimum bids on a lot of these properties are all going to be pretty low. Yeah, you know, they've also got bundles here, you know, which this I is think, like a bundled yeah, section. I, I think it has like a ton of properties in it. Yeah. One of them did. One of those bundles had like 25 properties in it. Yeah, they do bundle some of them. Essentially what they're trying to do is they're just trying to get new property owners in these properties, new people paying the property taxes, taking care of them. And, and so, you know, when you're talking about a $100 opening bid, it's just, you know, and we have properties that could be valued anywhere from 5000 to to 100000 on this possible list. It just makes, you know, there's nothing like that available anywhere. Yeah. There's no way where you're going to be able to buy a large lot close to a lake for 100 bucks. Yeah, a lot of beautiful property up there. Um, and since we've got a second here, let's let's take a look at the uh, let's go take a look at the fast track authority here. It'll only take a second. And I don't remember the actual website name. So what I usually do to find it is just type in Google Mich Michigan Fast Track Land Bank Authority. 
and it's it's on the Michigan.gov website. It's Michigan.gov forward slash land bank. And I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And now if you click here, this is what it looks like when you first go to if you click to view all properties, then it changes the look here and it pulls up a map feature. You can see here. And essentially what it does is it has all the dots color coded. So you can uh, you can see what properties are just by their uh, by how they're color coded, and you can uh, basically decide what it is you want to look at. So uh, if we wanted to zoom in here, we could take a look and see some of the properties here, the property types. See, we've got a big cluster of uh, properties here in the residential vacant and uh, some residential improved, a couple things mixed in. But if we wanted to, we could click on uh, on one of these properties, and we can get some of the details here. Although in some of these, they'll have more details in terms of, um, of a picture. Sometimes not, though. And what we may need to do is uh, is uh, search for additional information on top of what we can get here. Yeah, in most of these properties, we're going to have to take that parcel number and search it on the county record. So that they they'll have some basic information. Sometimes they have photos, things like that, that that from when they initially sold the property. But you know, we're going to want to always go directly to the county website. So you know, the, the fast track authority or some of them aren't going to have direct links. A lot of them will have direct links to the, to the county records. Some of them won't. And if they don't, then we're just going to research those through the county records. And what we mean by that is that property we're looking at uh, just barely. I don't know if Wayne, I don't know how Wayne County, how they do it. Um, and I might type in parcel search or property search. So I'll type in Wayne County, Michigan parcel search, and that will generally, if there's um, a service available, you know, to pull up online records, then uh, we'll be able to find it under a term like that. And so this is what we're looking for here. Although I wonder, so give us the option here. I think it would give us the option here. Let's see. Switch that up. Uh, where do we change up that? We may have to try to pull up the county record and then from there get the map if we can't. Uh, you can see all the different layers here in maps. You know, by the way, maps are something you want to play around with and really become familiar with because they're so handy here. We've got a lot of different layers on the uh, the map that we could add there. Parcel boundaries, more layers here. Now, jump over here to the next one. So why don't we take a look? I'm actually kind of interested in some of the bid for assets stuff. One thing I quickly want to show as well is just uh, some of the the Colorado, New Jersey uh, online tax lien auction, just to get an idea of it real quick. And so what I did is I went back to the uh, list center here, and I'm going to go to back to the online auctions page, which is going to pull up this page right here for us. And this is where we decide you know, whether we're looking for online tax liens, online tax deeds, or you know, redemption deeds. So we would click on online tax liens here. So we, what we can do is we can see the different Colorado auctions that are coming up. Let's just go ahead and click on Mesa. So here you can see the real auction website. You know they're going to have a website that's completely dedicated to to the auction. Up here you, on the left, you'll see the bidding rules, the results, the tax information. Uh, but if we just want to see the properties that are for sale, uh, we can just click on preview items for sale. And then from there, real auction is just going to pull up a, a list of all the tax lien certificates. Uh, you can see that there's just over a thousand tax liens. So. You know, this isn't a, a huge, huge county. There's not a huge amount of liens, but there is uh, plenty of liens available. Uh, one thing as well is the, 
these auction websites are going to have links directly to the county records. And so what we usually do is we'll, we'll search by price um, just because it seems to be the easiest way to be able to do that to kind of zero in on tax liens that we might be interested in. Yeah, so if we were looking, um, can we even just click on any of them? Yeah, we'll just click on this. Yeah, let's just take a look here at what one of these are. So it's a tax lien for about 2700 If we wanted to see exactly what it is. Huh, it's interesting. Like home. It says it's in a retirement or nursing community. I wonder if that just means it's an over 50. Yeah, it could be like, yeah, like an over 50 community. You know, that could certainly be it. And we can see the value information on the property right here. Uh, you know, so we can see the land value, actual improvements. I mean, an improvement value on the property, I mean, it's a home. And the improvement value on it is between 450000 and 520000 Well, I guess it could be some type of nursing, like a, like a home nursing home. Yeah, it could be a multi. The value is definitely there. Yeah, the value is quite high. Yeah. You can see it sold in 1995 for $207,000. Yeah, which we're, we're looking at right there. There we go. Make that just a little bit bigger here. And they've got some images here of the property, too. You can kind of see it. It is like a multi-unit, isn't it? It's got a 1.6. It's over an acre large. Oh, that's an old picture. That sketches down below as well. Two buildings. Yeah. Yeah, it is multi-unit, nine plus. And, um, you know, this type of information right here is pretty handy because we can learn so much about the property here. This is basically a part of the assessor's records that tell us everything about it was built in 1976. It has 30 rooms, 10 bedrooms. You know, four bedroom, four bath, four. Uh, yeah, it's probably a tenplex, most likely. You know, if we want to do some additional information, we can look up the property address. But you know, when you're looking at two or th two grand or twenty five hundred bucks, you know, backed against a five hundred thousand dollar property, uh, you know, it's really yeah, it's a pretty, pretty easy investment to make. Yeah, I mean, the $3,000 amount on the lien is, uh, is well, the, the property looks like it's worth about 600000 at least. You know, probably more like 700000 And so that $3,000 tax lien is definitely within the, uh, the, the, the range of a bid-to-value ratio that's okay for liens. Um, you know, with liens, we're generally looking for um, a lien to be a couple percent of what the property is estimated may be worth. Maybe um, you know you don't want to see liens that are uh, that are up a crazy amount. But what you're really asking yourself though is how secure is my three thousand dollar investment here to purchase this lien? And the answer is well, it's secure by seven hundred thousand dollars worth of real estate, so it's highly secure. You know, it's very secure. Somebody's not likely to let that go to foreclosure. And if you could somehow foreclose on the property, um, you would make a ton of money on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a secure investment. So if you could get that investment at the right at the right interest rate, then it would be a no-brainer. Yeah, and you know, I like the way that their property records are put together here. They're pretty nice and handy. This one right here, we've got a home that's also sitting on a, on a bigger chunk of property here on a couple acres. Uh, it's got a total value of four hundred forty-six thousand. You know, we see the land value is 104. The improvement value is about 300 grand. Yeah, and it sold last in '96 for uh, 247 thousand with a warranty deed. Yeah, looks like it was probably transferred something within the family, or I would imagine with the zero. Oh yeah, in 2006. Yeah. Yeah, and that was still done with the warranty deed as well. Yeah, it was probably some type of family sale or. or... That's kind of a neat looking property. It's kind of an older style. Is there more than one picture? Oh man, that's an old. Picture. Yeah, that, yeah, that is an old picture here of it. Yeah, 
you know, it's nice when they have the building sketches available as well so you can see the, the outline of the property or the structure, the size of the structure. Uh, you know, all of this information can be real helpful, especially in, in trying to determine, uh, let's say that you, 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 we did acquire this property, it was a deed, well then we'd want to see, you know, we'd, we'd need that information to determine what would be the rehab cost or any of that kind of information. So all this county information can be incredibly helpful. Yeah. Perfect. Now let's see here. And pretty much gives us out of time here. But there are so many interesting things that we could uh, we could look at. All of these lanes, though, um, if we were looking to invest in these lanes, I would feel pretty comfortable investing in either of the ones we've seen so far. Um, you know, sight unseen, because that's how most tax lien investing works. You know, tax liens are created to redeem. That's what happens the vast majority of the time, and that's exactly what the investor is going for most of the time is they want that high interest rate return on a safe investment, but they don't necessarily want to try to buy property. If it's property you're after, we turn you to tax deeds, uh, which are properties that have already been foreclosed on. Yeah, and I would bet that, that all of these tax liens down to the lower dollar liens, at least a good portion of them, are probably on pretty good properties. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's generally the way it's going to work, especially in a state like Colorado. And so, you know, even if, let's say worst case scenario, you know, the properties that we're looking at, the house burned down or whatever, you're still looking at, at 150, 200 grand in just that land value. Uh, and and that's really something that's not going to happen in uh, anyway. Yeah, you know, when you look at these, it makes sense. Um, you know, the first properties we were looking at were $3,000 liens, and we drop that amount in half down to where we're at about 1,500 in the liens, and the property value drops about in half to where we're looking at properties that are worth about 250,000 now. Um, but it's one of the nice things about the uh, the tax system and the way that it works here. Um, you know, we can see the, uh, the it's newer home. yeah, it's a newer home. You know, this one's valued at about 300, 343,000 uh, for that $1,500 lien. You know, it would be a very secure investment. You can see they pay about $1,500 a year in property taxes uh, that we can see right here. Yeah, so, photo. yeah, and I think they do have a photo here, a couple of photos here of it. This one's from September 15th of 2016. You can see it's, it's a nice home there. Another picture here of the, uh, the home. These would all be great investments here at, the, at that amount. And uh, Colorado, they pay out... Um, 11% this year. Yeah, 11%. So what is it? It's 9% over, uh, over prime. Yeah. So uh, really an easy way to earn, you know, an easy way to earn a double digit return on your money with these liens. Very easy. In fact, probably the easiest investment. You basically pick these things out and buy them and they redeem automatically. Yeah. And one thing that is nice about Colorado is that is that the foreclosures are actually done through the county. So, you know, you're going to fill out an application, pay a fee, and the county's going to do the foreclosure, but you get to keep the property. So, you know, unlike Florida where it goes to a tax deed sale, in Colorado, of course, you're going to get a little bit lower interest rate, but at the same time, if it does go to foreclosure, then you're going to acquire the property. In fact, every single month where you're able to see tax and certificates that have gone through the foreclosure process, and essentially have now been issued to the to the lien holder. Yeah, there are some nice uh, tax liens that get foreclosed on in Colorado. Oh, yeah. We've seen some, we've yeah, seen some great a homes. A couple of good examples a few weeks ago or a few months ago in some videos on some really nice homes that were picked up for seven, eight grand worth 250, 300 grand. Yeah, so I think that is a good avenue to look down with, uh, with tax liens. Uh, well, I think that about does it here for us time-wise here tonight. We appreciate everybody joining us, though. We will be sure to uh, to get this recording up uh, so that you can watch the replay here of it uh, if, uh, if anybody wants to do that. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, feel free to contact us. You know, we uh, uh, we're always happy to answer questions here for people if if you need help with anything. So uh, once again, thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll plan on seeing everybody soon. Have a great week.